Pentax brand is no stranger to film shooters. Whether you shoot 35mm or medium format, Pentax has made some workhorse cameras that many of us love to use for their image quality, their lens choices, and reliability. I own and love using my Pentax cameras, and I've been meaning to add the Pentax 645 to the mix. So in May, uh, I pulled the trigger and got the N version. Let's take a look at why I bought this camera and some images I made with it on my recent trip to the Peak District here in the UK. Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Satya. I make videos about photography, filmmaking, and creative journey. Why Pentax 645N? Basically, convenience. The autofocus, the metering, and slightly slicker and more compact design compared to my Pentax 6x7. I have been using the 6x7 for a couple of years now, and I still love using it on its own. More recently this past year, whenever I do have the time to go out and shoot, I've been doing that with my large format camera, and the Pentax 6x7 became sort of the additional backup camera that I carry around with me. Uh, the, the large format camera is already sort of labor intensive and requires a lot of attention. So I just needed something that is reliable, but easier to use compared to the 6x7. Pentax released three versions of this camera, the 645, the N version, which is the one I bought, and the N2, which came much later um, than the N. The older one does not have autofocusing, so it didn't tick all the boxes for me. And the newer one, the N2, has uh, quite a few features like mirror lockup, uh, ability to set 10 different functions like EV increments, uh, number of frames to shoot, exposure delay time, and so on, compared to the N version. And though they would have been nice to have, they just did not seem like a deal breaker for me. Uh, so yeah, the N turned out to be the model for me where I could save some money compared to the N2 while having all the features that I need. Autofocusing, it uses a face matching autofocus system set up for both uh, horizontal and vertical orientation. So the autofocusing works effectively both ways. It uses three CCD sensors and has a usable range of EV minus one to about EV 18. There are two um, switches that let you choose AF points and AF modes. For AF points, it's either spot or three point spot as it says, only tries to um, focus on one spot in the middle of the frame using just one CCD sensor, and the three-point AF uses all three CCD sensors. For autofocusing modes, you have single or servo. Single is just one frame at a time, and servo is basically tracking your subject through multiple frames. I have not used the servo mode yet, because uh, I don't shoot fast-moving subject. I also learned that Pentax implemented something called a predictive AF, which automatically gets activated while in the servo mode. Uh, this actually sounds pretty cool on paper where the camera, when detecting a subject that is in movement, tries to calculate the distance it'll travel between shutter release and the actual exposure to find out where to focus. Um, but again, I haven't used this. If any of you watching have this camera and have used the servo mode extensively, let us know in the comments how it performs. There is a focus assist uh, light that you can see in the viewfinder when the subject is in focus, which is useful whether you're using autofocusing or manual focusing modes. And to switch to manual focus, there is a sliding switch on the lens and it just disengages the motor so the focusing ring is smooth to turn. Thank you. 
It has three metering modes selectable by this switch on the shutter speed dial. Spot, which covers 1% of the image area, so we can pinpoint the spot uh, where needed. Center weighted, so the center of the image is given priority over the rest of the frame. And then a dual six segment metering. It's called dual because it measures light on both sides of the viewfinder. Uh, one of those covers the entire image area and another one just the center of the frame. And both of these are six segment. So even on backlit situations, the camera knows to compensate for that to make the subject in the center of the frame look brighter. I've shot a handful of rolls so far and uh, they all look pretty well exposed to me. There are some other features relevant to this camera that sweetened the deal for me like data imprinting on the film, auto bracketing, exposure compensation and the ability to shoot fully automatic if needed. Uh, which can be done by lining all the knobs and dials to uh, the green value on the scale and putting the lens on AF mode and it's, the camera becomes a fully automatic medium format camera. It also has an exposure lock, which Pentax calls a memory lock. So, you know, point the spot for which you'd like the camera to calculate the exposure value for, and then press and hold this button so it sort of holds that exposure value for you while you then reframe your shot. It also has multiple exposure switch. It uses AA batteries, which is great. And it's got tripod sockets for both vertical and horizontal orientations. For the last three shots of the roll, I wanted to do a panorama of the view from the top of the pike. I then stitched them together in post using Lightroom. I also want to quickly touch on the shooting experience itself. The form factor always looked a bit weird to me and that's one of the reasons why I was holding off from buying this camera. I just didn't think this boxy looking thing would feel good in my hands to pick up and shoot, but I was definitely wrong about that. It feels great in my hands and the amount of grip is really good. Uh, and it also is a quite well balanced camera with the 75 millimeter lens. Maybe that'll change if I end up shooting with their zoom lenses. Given that I bought this specifically sort of to be a secondary camera while I go out to shoot with the large format um, camera, I did take it out uh, on a couple of occasions and shot some portraits with it and I was really pleased with that experience. Anyway, first impressions, I'm really pleased with the camera, especially with its autofocusing and metering abilities uh, and uh, how light it is compared to the 6x7. But yeah, once I shoot a bit more with it, I'll make a detailed review of the camera. But that's it for this one. Thank you so much for giving me your time. Take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.